Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. I found another terrarium. I forgot that I had this one. Starting things off with a voice crack. Or apothecary jar is what I should say. It's not a terrarium yet. We'll be here by the end of the video. I just basically forgot that I had this one. Remember, I bought a whole bunch. I say remember because I talked about this before. I bought a few of these actually last winter and then waited till this year to do these because I couldn't find any terrarium plants. Got stocked up on plants. Now I have these and then I did a bunch of others and just forgot I had this one sitting around on a shelf. That's all. Not much to it. This one does have more of a unique shape to it. I mean, it's just a bowl, but all the other ones I've done have been really tall and narrow. I haven't been able to put a lot in them because of that. With this one, I was thinking it would be fun to uh, plant this one up with lots and lots and lots and lots of colorful plants. I, I shouldn't say lots and lots and lots. I only have three plants picked out for it, but uh, I'm going to like divide them up, spread them around, and I just, I want to see a lot of contrast. It's not going to be like some of the other ones I've done where it's just like something very simple and nice i really like those ones that are very very simple but this one just it has all the space for low growing plants i'm gonna shut up now and just get to planting i think because we've already done the other videos about the various layers about uh like keeping things clean and whatnot we've been over all that before so i'm basically just going to jump on into this i've got my pumice right here be careful oh i don't want to break this before i've even gotten started i have a very very small amount of horticultural charcoal left i'm gonna have to run out and get some more probably but this should be enough for this and uh, i don't think i'm going to mess with a screen in this one just because well I'm not really going to be able to put much in this period as far as like layering goes. I am going to put a little bit of charcoal down here into the base of this because see there's a hole in here. The water tends to settle down in there so I want something to be in there to keep things a little bit more tidy. Some more pumice but I'm really I'm not going heavy on these layers because this is so shallow that I need every bit of space available for planting. So basically I'm just going to put enough in here to where things are just kind of flat. And that's pretty much it. I'm even going to be a little bit stingy on the charcoal because I just don't think that there's space in here for an awful lot of it. That'll do. The main thing is that I want it kind of centralized here in the middle so that when water rushes down, down here basically, it's going to pass through that charcoal carbon, whatever you want to call it. I think that's as much space as I can sacrifice in here for the false bottom. You can see they're just, once I have some soil in here, there's not going to be a lot of space in here for plants, so I'm going to have to be pretty careful about this. I did think about, I toyed around with the idea of doing this with cactus and succulents. I'm just really hesitant to do a, a terrarium that has a lid on it with cactus and succulents. It's definitely doable, but I would have to be uh, so incredibly careful every single time I watered and probably leave the lid off of it for even a few days after I water. I don't know, I just kind of want these to be uh, low maintenance, that's sort of the point, because they're basically just miniature decorative gardens, that's what these are, right? And I don't want to have to fuss with them very much. You know, the whole reason I've been making them the way that I have been with these false bottoms and the specific soil blends is that they can be fairly low maintenance. And while cactus and succulents are like inherently low maintenance, I actually think with something that has a lid on it, it would be a little bit more work. The way I have these so far, I really haven't had to do much of anything with watering. Basically, I just make sure that the soil's pre-moistened, I plant them into it, and that's about it. With all of these terrariums I've been doing, I'll more than likely only have to water them like maybe two to three times a year. It's going to depend uh, basically on how well the lid fits on them and that's basically it. So yeah, that's enough of that though. Let's talk about the plants. Look at her or him or our non-binary plant friend, whatever you want to be, it's fine. Frankie Fetonia, Fetonia Frankie. Fetonias make fan fantastic plants for terrariums. They like the humidity a lot and Fetonias typically, the more light they get will be more low growing. You start to see that higher growth when they're not getting as much light. And they aren't a full sun plant, that's for sure, but like really bright indirect light will keep that growth more stout. This being a terrarium, I'm going to have to be very careful about how I do that because, you know, don't want to cook the plants. That would be 
bad. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to fit all this over here on the desk. I think I will. I'm going to try and make it work. I have this out here because I need to divide this up as well as the next plant, which is a lovely little spike moss. Spike moss and my camera, they've never gotten along. So I'm going to have some issues getting that in focus. I apologize in advance because I just know that it's going to drive me insane throughout this entire video trying to make that look nice. And then, nah, the last plant doesn't need to be divided up. So with these Fetonias, you can see there are a few plants in here. I'm just going to come in here and very gently pull them apart. I'm going to lose some roots. It's just kind of nature of the beast when doing something like this. They're pretty tough plants. They're going into a nice, moist environment where they should recover from that just fine, I would think. I don't think they'll skip a beat. I can see there's this kind of outlier over here. I'm going to separate that one out too. I kind of wish I had... A couple more for what I had planned but that's all right I can make it work and I'm actually gonna wait to divide the spike moss up until I get going here so for the center of the terrarium all the way over here that I'm going to use this confetti syngonium another plant that doesn't want to focus the confettis they have like multicolored foliage they're a really nice pretty plant I like that the foliage stays mostly green but with splotches of pink and some various shades of white within them and i want this right here in the very center of the terrarium because it's a syngonium it's going to get much taller than the other plants and then i'm going to layer everything else around it it's pretty simple I know it looks weird now, but hopefully as the photonias adjust in here, they'll be a little bit more stout. And then the syngonium is going to come up here out of the top a little bit more. My plan was then to take this spike moss here and sort of patch it in some of these gaps here, and that will fill in down lower. Uh, you know, we'll see how it does in there. Spike moss and myself, we don't always get along. It's not actually a moss it does have roots so it's a little bit easier to kind of poke it down in here and for it to have a little bit more of a chance to be somewhat forgiving when all said and done after you know tearing the poor thing up yeah this entire thing is going to have to stay pretty moist <laughs> because of you know the photonias being pulled out of their pots and their roots reworked a little bit and then the same thing happening there with the spike moss i think they'll be okay though i'm gonna use my little squeezy bottle here to help get those edges cleaned off i've noticed these work fantastic in these terrariums that have these like lips on them where they're kind of beveled is that the right word you know what i'm saying because you can usually as long as they're nice and full get in there and really squirt this all the dirt and everything off of the sides foliage cleaned off and give everything a little bit of a drink the soil was not quite as moist as it usually is when i do these i just want to be sure that there's enough water in here that everything is going to be in contact with the nice moist soil you know given that i had to kind of rip some roots up but I don't think it's going to need to be too much. Just enough to make sure that the surface of the soil is nice and moist and that some water is kind of flushed through their roots so that those new roots will start to form. I want to tear things up and then put them in dry soil. That would be bad. And the soil was somewhat damp, just not quite as damp as I would prefer for something of this nature. <laughs> and there it is. It certainly isn't the most um, beautiful terrarium I've thrown together. It's kind of scrappy because I made it with scraps, three plants and that's it. But I was able to use those three plants to pretty much fill in the entire thing, which is something that I have been sort of steering away from with a lot of these terrarium videos. I've mostly just been uh, aiming for plants that will stay small and not take up a great amount of area as they grow. And then with certain plants, it's just kind of the nature of the beast. You can't have only dwarf plants. It's, I mean, you could, depending on how great your nurseries are. But where I live, it's not that easy to find a ton of super dwarf plants that stay nice and small or just inherently small, not necessarily dwarf plants. But the syngonium that's in the middle here, the pixie syngonium, that will, over time, outgrow this. And I'll pull it out when that happens. It won't be a big deal. Maybe I'll move it into something larger. 
but you can see it still has a decent chunk of space left to do some growing in here. And then these Fetonias, can you all even see what's going on in here? What a mess. Once these Fetonias start to show signs of new growth, I am going to come in and I'm going to give them a pretty heavy pruning. I'm going to cut them fairly far back. Well, I guess it's probably not that heavy, but like you can see this right here. Once I start to see new growth coming out of this, I'll know that, okay, it's started to root itself in. It's going to survive any sort of pruning. And then I'm going to give it that cut back. I mean, really, they're pretty tough. I could probably make a cut right around here and just stick this down there in the soil, maybe with a little bit of rooting hormone, and it would probably take off because it's going to be nice and humid in here for everything. So they should propagate just fine if I were to do that. I don't think I need to, though. Fetonias will spread on their own just fine, especially in something that's a nice, moist environment. I'll give them a cutback. That's going to encourage their roots to spread out. It's also going to encourage more bushy, compact growth, which is what I'm going to want in here, because if they stay growing at this pace, it's not really going to work. So it's also somewhat experimental, what I'm doing here. The spike moss, I, I'm hit or miss with spike moss spike moss, I should say. Sometimes it does great, sometimes not so much. Usually when it doesn't do well for me, it means that things have just gotten way too hot. I move my plants outside during the summer and the spike moss, it just, if I don't remember to move it to the deep, deep shade when the like super, super intense heat comes in, then it, 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 it struggles a little bit. But so far, when I keep it outdoors near my misters, it does okay. That's really neither here nor there to the terrarium culture, though, so I'm not going to go into that. I think it should do better in a situation like this. Yeah. Overall, like I said, little messy. That's okay. It was super quick and cheap. Three plants, then that's it. There's a lot of contrast in here. And when I look at this and when I thought about it in my head, I was thinking more about how it will look when it grows as opposed to right when I plant it, right? Once that syngonium puts on a little bit of height and more fullness and then the phytonias are able to get a cut back and hopefully stay lower, we will see how that works. And uh, then there will be all the different layers. Have the green here, this, it looks pink in person, looks red on my camera right now, but the phytonias have kind of a pinkish red foliage to them. And then that confetti, the confetti syngonium here will have green and pink leaves. So even though it's really colorful, everything still kind of ties together just fine without it being like too, too, too crazy and chaotic. I didn't bother top dressing with soil either. I just didn't see a reason to when I'm hopefully going to have something that covers the surface of the soil completely as it is. It didn't really make sense to me. So it went against my nature a little bit with these terrariums. I really wanted to top dress that soil and put some gravel and some sticks and things in here, which I may still end up doing. I do like to make sure that there's, you know, some earthy, uh, aspects and whatnot going inside of them but i just i don't know i think for now this is fine it's a different direction than the other ones because the other ones i have tried to keep really clean and simple but i don't know i kind of like it i'm gonna like having the contrast having something that is a little bit more wild and just kind of looks like a jarred up garden that's the whole point that's what a terrarium is essentially it's a tiny little chunk of garden space. And that's what I love about them. There's just something peaceful and tranquil about them. I do think this one will have a good amount of potential for being more bioactive once I can get some critters in here, some isopods and some springtails, which I'm pretty sure I have springtails all over my orchids, so I need to go check that out. Uh, I'll talk more about the bioactive and uh, having the live insects aspect in a different video. I've wanted to do that for a while, but it's been a little bit too cold to get them shipped here. So for now, it, we just keep building terrariums and having fun with them. Nothing wrong with that, right? Ugh, I love that Fetonia so much. The Frankie Fetonia is probably one of my favorite house plants. Yeah, they can be jerks sometimes. Not always the easiest plants to keep alive when, you know, I mean, they dry out, they dry out, but they rehydrate super quickly and they tend to be forgiving one, as long as they get watered quickly enough that is. The back end doesn't have as much of the spike moss in it but that's fine there's more than enough in here it'll fill this out very quickly. Speaking of these being filled out rather quickly that does kind of go back to when I first started Terrarium Tuesday and I was talking about how I like to use plants that do stay at nice and small because that makes the terrariums less maintenance. I will have to of course stay on top of pruning all of these things especially the spike moss that's in here that's going to really i've seen terrariums with the spike moss in them where it just like 
eats the entire terrarium, which looks really cool, but uh, that's not going to work with this setup, right? Still has plenty of room to spread and grow, so I'm not really worried about that right now. Not hard to get in with a pair of scissors or snippers or clippers or whatever and tidy things up. That's not a difficult task at all. Except yeah, eventually the syngonium will have to come out, but it'll be good in there for probably a few months, I would say, at least. I don't know, time will tell. We'll see what happens with it. So what's going on with your terrariums? Y'all been doing anything fun with them? Tell me, leave it down in the comments. Love talking to everybody. All my social media is linked down below. I'm on Instagram more than anything else. Oh, look at those nails. See, that's why right there, when I do videos, I usually wear gloves. Like, this doesn't bother me in actual everyday life. Just go inside and wash my hands, which I suppose I could have done now instead of just sitting here and sticking them in everyone's screen. Whatever, it's part of gardening. Not a big deal. If you could like the video, I appreciate it. It makes a big difference for the channel. So thank you for that. And subscribe as well. And hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos come out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. And everything's just going beautifully for you. Wow, that's really pretty. I like that. That's a nice looking shot. Who knew the little $5 fountain would look so nice? Looks very nice, actually. Anyways, that's enough. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye!